Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where it's all about racing. I'm Mark, and today we're going to take a look at a pair of BMW M Hybrid V8s as competed and debuted at the 2023 Rolex 24 at Daytona. And here is a look at both of those cars. I have both the 24 and the 25 as produced by TSM in 143 scale. Now, as mentioned, these cars both debuted at the 24 Hours of the Tona just last year. This was BMW's much anticipated return to top flight racing since the BMW V12 in 1999. Now, the car was designed by BMW M Works, but was built by Delara. The chassis is an LMP2 based carbon fiber monocoque. Now, as you all know, virtually every prototype has a mid mounted engine, in this case, a BMW. P66-3, 3,999cc V8 twin turbocharged 32-valve DOHC, and I have got to take a breath after that because it is a mouthful. Now, the power output on these spectacular engines is about 640 horsepower, 671 when you combine the electric motor to it as well. The transmission is an X-Track P1359, 7-speed sequential manual. Now, if you take a look at the front of these cars, one of the things that I do like about TSM uh, is they do have really nice, what I call showroom bases. They're these gorgeous white. And you can see it tells you what the car is. It tells you that, the, for example, you know, this livery was from the 2023 IMSA Daytona 24 Hours and BMW Team RLL and Ray Hal Letter, Letterman Lanigan Racing was chosen to represent BMW in the IMSA WeatherTech Challenge. Now, this is a relationship that the team has had with BMW since the 2009 BMW M3 GT2 car, if any of you guys remember that. Now, as I mentioned, I will be going to Watkins Glen here in just a couple days, and consequently, the first and the last win for the team was at the 2023 Saline 6 Hours of the Glen just last year with the 25 car, which we have here in the back. Now, the drivers of that car were all Platinum factory drivers, including Philip M. from Austria, Augusta Farfus from Brazil, Marco Whitman from Germany, and you can see that on the cab of the car, as you see there. You also notice Col Colton Herta from IndyCar. Now, he did double time. He actually was the fourth driver for both of these cars. And the 24 car has Nick Yelly from Great Britain, Connor Filippi. See if we can get a little closer there and still see it. Sheldon Vanderlyn from South Africa, and again, Colton Herta. These cars are beautifully bunned by TSM in 143 scale. And folks, I, I love the livery. I like the shape of the car. I, th I think it's pretty neat. I think the livery is absolutely fantastic when you take a look at it, particularly from the top down as you're viewing it there. Now, many of you might say when you buy a car, you know, why buy both? I like, if, if they're factory teams, I try to get both cars. Uh, in this case, I was lucky enough to be able to do so. Now, the way you can differentiate one car from the other, and we'll take a look at both of them here. If you take a look at the 24 car, I call this primarily blue-based because the grille is largely blue as opposed to the red you see on the 25 car. Your mirrors are blue, and your windshield banner is blue. Take a look at the 25 car. The grill is largely red, the mirrors are red, and the windshield banner is red. Now, guys, the detailing on these cars is absolutely fantastic. I mean, take a look at that. It is just really awesome looking. I think the TSM did a really nice job in molding it, Paint and finish on, and decaling on the cars are excellent. Aerials abound. Uh, one thing you'll notice here that's kind of hard to see, you have the, the tow hook right here in the, below the number panel, and the center of the number panel is the pitot tube. You have a bunch of aerials on the top of the car as well as the camera pod. Now, for those of you familiar with the IMSA WeatherTech series, you know that number panels are colored, and that's helped to differentiate one class from the other. The prototype class is always black, and you can see that clearly there. You have leader lights, which I really like on the in the MSO WeatherTech series because they tell you exactly where the car is running in the class, and you can see that right back here. And you've also got the Rolex 24 Daytona tag, as you can see right there. Take a close look at it. 
you can get a little better look at the cockpit. Cockpit details are kind of hard to see on these cars, but it's still very, very sharp. Now, here's a cool look at the back of one of the cars. I think this is actually the 24 car. And I just, I, I love the massive exhaust tube that you have here. And then the heat shield that runs almost to the end of the body panel. The lights are very nicely done. You see the tow hook in the middle. You've got a huge rear wing on the back of it, as you do stand with all these cars. And of course, the standard shark fin that attaches the bodywork to the rear wing. I mentioned all the drivers just a moment ago, and here's a take a look at the hero card that I have that I actually picked up at the 2023-24 uh, hours of Daytona. And here you can see the signatures of all the drivers. Uh, you notice there that Connor DeFilippi on the far left signed up above his name where Nick Elody did below, which he should have. And Sheldon Vanderlyn did it over on the side here underneath Colton Hurtis' signature. But nevertheless, that is all seven of the drivers. And note, Colton Hurtis did double duty in both of the cars during the 24 hours of Daytona. Well, guys, that wraps it up. I want to thank every one of you that have visited the channel, that views my car collection. I really appreciate it. I look forward to, in just two days, going back to the Watkins Glen again to give you a really cool paddock tour at the six hours of the Glen. We will have prototypes, GT3, GT4, TCR, and support series, which is usually, I think it might be, the Porsche Carrera Challenge as well as the Lamborghini Super Trofeo. And I think the, uh, the Mazda... MX-5s will be there as well. They're always really fun to watch. Looking forward to it. See you then. Take care.